Welcome. Thanks for watching this dairy video brought to you by Dairy Xnet. In this video, Dan McFarland joins us to discuss the ways facilities can affect dairy cattle lameness. If you'd like alerts on new articles, videos, and resources, be sure to check out the video description below to follow us on Facebook and Twitter or sign up for our newsletter. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Today's presenter, Dan McFarland, is an agricultural engineering educator for Penn State Extension with program responsibilities in South Central and Southeast Pennsylvania. Program emphasis involves animal shelter and environmental systems design. Dan works closely with producers and agricultural professionals on issues related to new dairy shelter design and improvement of existing facilities. Educational efforts include farmstead design and layout, animal comfort and well-being, ventilation system design and management, resting and feeding area design, heat stress abatement, and watering systems. In addition to regular duties, he has written articles for the national dairy publications, prepared papers for the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers conferences, and been an invited speaker at industry-sponsored seminars on topics related to cow comfort and dairy system design. Thanks, Bob. Let's take a look at how dairy cattle facilities might contribute to lameness. Jan Shearer, an Iowa State University veterinarian, notes that cows are land animals. They prefer soft surfaces for walking and lying down. Properly designed dairy shelter systems offer many advantages to cows and their caregivers. Cows are protected from weather extremes and have convenient access to resting, feeding, and watering areas. Managers and caregivers also have the opportunity to closely monitor and respond to the health needs, performance, and well-being of the cows under their care. Confinement housing requires cows to stand and walk on hard, unyielding surfaces that can promote claw horn war overgrowth and weight-bearing issues that lead to lameness. Estimates indicate that in the indirect effects of lameness on milk production and reproduction account for 49% of the cows culled from dairy herds in the U.S. While hard floor surfaces may be a major cause, other housing system elements and the management of them can also contribute to lameness. Lameness in dairy cattle is a serious issue. Possible causes need to be identified and corrected because as the cartoon notes, this model is hard to get parts for. First, let's look at some direct factors, those things that come directly in contact with the cow's feet that cause or contribute to lameness. A dairy cow's weight is not evenly distributed between all four feet. Approximately 60% of her total weight is supported by the front legs and the re remainder by her rear legs. When standing, the force exerted on the front and rear feet of a 1,400 pound cow with a foot bearing area of eight square inches is approximately 52 and a half and 35 pounds per square inch respectively. That force is doubled when supported by only two legs while walking. That's almost seven and a half to 11 and a half times the force exerted on a 185 pound person with a foot bearing area of 20 inches. This weight-bearing pressure, along with inflammation of the corium, causes poor horn growth that may lead to sole ulcers and white line disease. Each foot slips slightly as cows move along concrete alleys and lots. Rough floor surfaces wear claw horn faster than it can grow. Even well done new concrete alley surfaces are initially abrasive. Poor installations where aggregate may be exposed is even worse. Of special concern are areas where cows make sharp turns, traffic lanes longer than 200 feet, and downhill concrete inclines greater than 2%. Smooth flooring surfaces offer cattle little traction that can cause slipping, splitting, and falls, especially when wet or covered with manure slurry, resulting in bruising and bone injury. Inorganic bedding materials such as sand can provide additional traction, but can also be abrasive and increase hoof wear especially in travel lanes and areas where cows turn. Sand can also wear and polish concrete floors with regular alley scraping or flushing. This is a close-up shot of a traffic lane in a dairy system using sand bedding. 
This alley sees 400 cows three times per day as they move to and from the milking center. After about six years, the owner noticed some wear. Most of the aggregate had worn with the mixture, but some of the harder pieces, perhaps quartz, had not, standing an eighth inch or more higher than the floor level, creating a situation that may have caused some soil injury. An uneven floor surface like the one shown here with wide, deep grooves and narrow treads can place the claws of each foot on different elevations, increasing the chance of injury to the space between them. Holes in irregular surfaces are unacceptable in cattle areas, especially in areas where cows are moved in groups. Sharp stones and rocks are a problem in any area where cows might be, but those that might be dragged inside onto a concrete floor can cause sole punctures and lead to abscesses. Also, make sure all construction debris, such as nails and screws, are removed from the cattle area before being occupied by cows. Concrete is hard and unyielding, but it is the most common flooring material used in dairy housing. It is durable and allows easier removal of manure. So how can it be made a suitable floor for cattle? First, it requires an experienced installer with cow sense and the ability to create a surface that provides acceptable traction without exposed aggregate or sharp edges. A builder once told me that concrete varies by the load, the day, and time of day. It takes someone that can recognize these variables and pace their work to get the job done correctly. Desirable flooring characteristics include a grooved floor pattern with grooves of proper size and spacing, a smooth but not slippery flat surface between the grooves. The goal of a groove pattern is to allow each foot to step on at least one groove when moving or standing. Parallel and diamond patterns seem to be the most popular. Parallel grooves run in the same direction as the alley length. Grooves are typically 3 8 to 1 half inch wide and deep and spaced 3 to 4 inches on center. A diamond pattern is preferred since it provides better traction in more directions. The same groove side is used, but grooves parallel to each other are spaced 3 to 5 inches on center. Resilient or rubber flooring is also popular in dairy housing. It can offer some relief from the pressure concrete floors exert. More resilient choices offer better comfort and traction but may not stand up to vehicle traffic. More durable choices hold up well to vehicle traffic, but can become slippery when wet. Wet manure covered alleys can contribute to lameness in a number of ways. First, wet concrete can be up to 80% more abrasive than dry concrete because cow's feet are more likely to slip with each step. Moisture also softens the claw, leading to, an, leading to increased wear. In addition, Manure covered alleys may also increase the chance of infection through punctures or cracks in the sole or hoof wall. Alleys need to be cleaned regularly, not only to improve traction, but to help keep the stalls and cows cleaner. Dairy cows confined to tie stalls for long periods of time often experience extended growth at the front of the foot or long toes. Diligent management of tie stalls is also necessary, especially if the rear of the stall becomes wet and manure laden. Soft, resilient floor surfaces can also lead to uneven horn growth and contribute to lameness. Long toes have been observed in freestall systems where most of the floor surfaces are covered with resilient material. Left untreated, weight-bearing shifts to the rear portion of the feet and may create sole ulcers. It should also be pointed out that wet manure-covered areas also need to be avoided in young stock housing as well. Feet and leg problems don't only affect mature cows. The alleys and resting areas of young stock facilities need to be kept clean and dry to promote good feet and leg health. It goes without saying, but rush cattle handling can cause increased hoof wear and often results in injury due to slips and falls. Next, let's consider some indirect factors that may cause or contribute to lameness. Productive dairy cattle prefer to rest 10 to 14 hours per day. This suggests that cows may also stand 10 to 14 hours per day. Excessive standing is abnormal behavior. Common evidence of freestall design and management problems includes perching, excessive standing in the stall, and resting in cow alleys. Similar behavior can be observed in tie stalls, but may require more careful observation since cows are tethered, making it more difficult for them to refuse the stall. 
The greatest effect of poor stall design may be on lame cows within any given herd. Stall design and management factors that lead to excessive standing include stall dimensions that do not allow cows to rise, recline, and rest easily, a stall structure that restricts normal postures needed to enter, rest, and exit the stall, an uncomfortable resting surface that does not encourage cows to enter, and poor stall management, including infrequent bedding and grooming. Dairy cows prefer a clean, dry, comfortable resting area. Whether free stall or tie stall, the stall size and structure should allow the cows to recline and rise easily. Cows do not crawl into stalls, they lie down on them. If the dimensions in the structure are correct, the largest cows in the group should be able to stand in the stall with their backbone level, front and rear legs square under her, and perhaps touching the neck rail. Given a choice, cows like generously bedded stalls with at least four inches of good quality bedding. Mattress and mat stall beds can also be a good choice. However, they only replace some percentage of the cushion and comfort cows prefer. A layer of bedding is also necessary. Good stall management is essential. Stalls need to be groomed to remove manure and soiled areas two to three times per day. Bedding needs to be added according to cow needs, not the calendar. Overcrowding free stall groups typically means cows stand in alleys for longer periods than desired. First come, first serve stall availability leaves some cows standing that prefer to rest. Overcrowding also reduces available feed space per cow, limiting access to feed and the possibility of slug feeding. Cows often stand too long in the holding area. Idle standing in the holding area for extended period of times causes stress. Furthermore, lame cows are less mobile, tend to hang to your, near the rear of the group and experience longer standing times before returning to the housing area. Group sizes should match parlor performance, so cows spend no longer than three hours per day in the milking center. Feed management practices where cows eat fewer and larger meals more quickly may be associated with increased incidence of subacute ruminal acidosis and laminitis. Factors that can cause slug feeding of a total mixed ration include limited feed area, limited feed access time, restricted feeding versus feeding for a 5 to 10% refusal, an inconsistent feeding schedule, infrequent TMR push-up, sorting, component feeding, and bunk competition. To allow an entire group to eat at the same time, provide at least 27 inches of feed space per cow. With a total mixed ration and good feeding area management, 18 inches of feed space per cow can also work. But feed needs to be available to cows, and cows need to be available to feed more than 20 hours per day. Timely feed delivery and feed push-up are also necessary. Cows can push feed out of reach within 30 minutes after delivery. Heat stress cows also tend to stand more, probably because they expose more of their total body area, allowing better heat transfer to the environment. Panting also helps heat transfer, but if she's panting, she's not ruminating, and that may create some undesirable conditions in the rumen. In North America, high rates of claw horn lesion development are seen in late summer. This could be due to an increased subacute ruminal acidosis, increased standing times, or both. A two-month delay between peak heat stress and peak lameness seems to reflect the time needed for a sole lesion to develop once an insult occurs in the corium. To reduce heat stress, remember and put into practice heat stress abatement methods described in the acronym SAW. Provide shade for weather protection from direct sunlight, an air exchange to remove moisture, heat, and pollutants, air movement to improve the rate of heat transfer from the cow, plenty of easily accessible drinking water, and either direct or indirect evaporative cooling. In summary, a good facility plan to reduce lameness in dairy cattle should provide a confident footing with non-skid flooring, regular removal of manure slurry from cow alleys, provide a clean, dry, comfortable resting area, allow good feed access and management to encourage good room and function, manage heat stress during hot weather, and provide good standing and resting surfaces for heifers to promote good feet and leg health. Dairy housing systems contain features that may directly or indirectly cause or contribute to lameness in dairy cattle. Recognizing the facility, feeding, and management factors that contribute to lameness and making adjustments to prevent 
or at least minimize their role can go a long way to improving herd health and success of the dairy business.